formative years. Werner Best, born on the 10th of July, 1903, in Darmstadt, Hesse, encountered frequent translocations in his early years. At the age of nine, his familial residence shifted to Dortmund, subsequently settling in Mainz, where he concluded his educational pursuits. His progenitor, a postal overseer, met a tragic demise in France at the commencement of World War I. In his adolescence, Best established the German National Youth League and assumed membership in the National People's Party of Mainz. Between 1921 and 1925, Best dedicated himself to his legal studies at diverse institutions, encompassing Frankfurt, Freiburg, Jessen, and ultimately, the University of Heidelberg, where he attained his doctoral distinction in 1927. Owing to his resistance against the French occupation of the Ruhr, Best confronted apprehension and a brief stint of incarceration. In 1930, he affiliated himself with the Nazi party, NSDAP, and by 1931, predating the Nazi ascendancy, he had already enlisted in the SS. The termination of his career in the judicial sector of the German federal state of Hesse unfolded in 1931. The unearthing of the Boxheim documents, detailing his concocted plans for a Nazi coup, led to his expulsion. Nazi Epoch and World War II Werner Best assumed a pivotal role within the Nazi administration and throughout the course of World War II. Trained in jurisprudence, he became a relied-upon figure by luminaries such as Heydrich and Himmler during the 1930s, owing to his adeptness in conceptualizing and rationalizing Nazi legal doctrines. Best's pivotal contributions played a decisive role in conferring nearly boundless authority upon the SS police machinery over German society. As a participant in the Academy for German Law and the chair of its Police Law Committee, Best ascended to the rank of SS Brigade Führer. He took charge of Department 1 of the Gestapo, overseeing organizational, administrative, and legal domains. Committed to the Nazis' national racial agenda, Best collaborated closely with Reinhard Heydrich, regarding the Gestapo's actions as imperative for both ethnic and political purification. In 1934, Best played a part in the Night of the Long Knives, an orchestrated purge by Hitler to eliminate the escalating influence of Ernst Röhm over the SA, the Nazi paramilitary organization. This operation resulted in the apprehension and demise of approximately 200 individuals, including Rome. With time, Best fostered ideological indoctrination within the Gestapo, highlighting a metaphorical role as doctors, treating the national body against perceived pathogens such as communists, Freemasons, churches, and Jews. In 1939, the SD and SIPO amalgamated into the Rai Security Main Office, RSHA, where Best assumed leadership of AMTI, tasked with administration and legal affairs. Best sustained his participation in Nazi endeavors, assuming a directorial role in Heydrich's foundation in 1939, and overseeing the appointment of leaders for the Einsatzgruppen task forces. Following his defeat in a power struggle within the RSHA in 1940, Best took on the role of War Administration Chief and led Section Administration in occupied France until 1942. During this period, he formulated radical schemes for the restructuring of Western Europe based on racial principles. Post the November 1942 telegram crisis, Best assumed the position of the Third Reich's plenipotentiary in occupied Denmark. Despite the endeavor to deport Denmark's Jews, Best retained his position until the culmination of the war in May 1945, even after direct German military control was established in Denmark in 1943. Administration orchestrated by the permanent secretaries. Adhering to the resolution of the Danish cabinet on April 9, 1940, to collaborate with German authorities, the Danish police engaged in cooperation with the German occupation forces. This collaboration persisted even following the resignation of the Danish government on August 29, 1943. On May 12, 1944, Werner Best mandated that the Danish police assume the responsibility of safeguarding 57 enterprises flagged by the Germans, as susceptible to sabotage by the burgeoning Danish resistance movement. Non-compliance threatened to reduce the Danish police force to a mere 3,000 men. While Nils Svenningsen, serving as the de facto leader of the Danish civil administration, inclined towards acquiescing to this demand, 
the Danish police organizations vehemently opposed it. Post the refusal of the German entreaty, Denmark declared a state of emergency on August 29, 1943. Subsequently, on September 19, 1944, the German army commenced the arrest of members of the Danish police forces. Out of 10,000 policemen, 1,984 faced arrest and deportation to German concentration and prisoner of war camps, with the majority finding themselves in Buchenwald. In an effort to avert the deportation of Danes to German concentration camps, Nils Svenningsen, the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, suggested the establishment of an internment camp within Denmark in January 1944. Best endorsed this proposal with the condition that the camp be situated in close proximity to the German border. The fruition of this idea led to the opening of the Freslev prison camp in August 1944. Best potentially deliberately sabotaged the roundup of the Jewish population in Denmark to avoid inciting the general Danish populace. In the rescue of the Danish Jews, the primary escape route involved crossing Rizun to Sweden by boat. Interestingly, during a critical period, all German patrol boats in the area received orders to dock for three weeks for repainting. While credit is attributed to Best's right-hand man, George Duckwitz, Danish authorities contend that Best may have discreetly informed his Jewish tailor about this development, contributing to the escape of several Jews. During his trial before Danish courts, Best asserted that the Jews managed to escape because he provided the dates to Duckwitz. In deliberations on May 3, 1945, concerning preparations for the impending German defeat, Best opposed the implementation of a scorched earth policy in Denmark. Post-war era In the aftermath of World War II, Werner Best took the stand as a witness during the Nuremberg trial of the major war criminals. Throughout his testimony, he endeavored to depict the Gestapo as a benign state entity, accentuating its subordination to governmental leaders and asserting its almost indiscernible distinction from Germany's criminal police. Historian Frank McDonough characterized Best's testimony as a revisionist interpretation of the Gestapo. Notably, Best argued that the Gestapo primarily conducted investigations prompted by reports from the general public. He further claimed that only grave cases of treason warranted enhanced interrogations under stringent protocols, during which, according to him, no confessions were coerced from the accused. In 1948, a Danish court sentenced Best to death, yet this verdict was subsequently commuted to a 12-year imprisonment upon appeal. He regained his freedom in 1951 as part of a Danish amnesty initiative for Nazi war criminals. In 1958, a Berlin denazification court imposed a fine of 70,000 marks on Best for his activities as an SS officer during the war. March 1969 saw Best briefly detained, and by February 1972, he faced renewed charges following the emergence of additional war crimes allegations. However, he secured release in August 1972 on the grounds of being medically unfit to undergo trial. Post this period, Best immersed himself in a network aiding former Nazis and dedicated his efforts to advocating for a comprehensive amnesty. He departed from the mortal realm in Mulheim, North Rhine-Westphalia, on June 23, 1989. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal and Patreon in the description box below.